Princess Peach Showtime is the latest first party release on the Nintendo Switch, and the first game I can remember at least since Super Princess Peach on the DS to star Peach in the title role. But is it a show-stopping performance, or should she step out of the limelight back into a more supporting role? Well, thank you to Nintendo for the review code, and now, let's find out. So story-wise then, Princess Peach makes her way to the theatre to see a grand show, only to find all is not well when she arrives. Madame Grape and her sour gang have taken over the theatre, forcing the actors into hiding as they attempt to spoil each of the plays. Peach meets a young creature named Stella, who attaches herself to the ribbon in Peach's hair, and they go on a quest together to save the theatre. Now in terms of gameplay, this is quite an interesting one I must say. On first glance, it does look a little bit like Super Mario 64 in that you have that big base area to explore and a number of small rooms that you can go into that transport you into a new world where you'll need to undertake a certain amount of tasks in order to complete the level, gaining a certain amount of currency that will move you on through the game. In Super Mario 64, it was stars, here it's sparkle gems. There are a number of these available in each of these worlds, and you'll pick them up sometimes through general tasks that you need to complete as you make your way through each level, but sometimes they can be missed, be it by being hidden away within the stage, or having to complete a certain task which can be failed, thus costing you that particular sparkle gem. Now what's interesting about the way these levels function though, is that Peach can pick up a costume as she goes along early in each level, which will then transform her into a certain type of actor for the role of that particular play. What this means is that each level does feel very different. They're not just differently skinned platforming stages as I had anticipated, with each of the character roles really changing the way the level is played. Early examples include a sword fighting level where it's very much about dodging your opponents and parrying their attacks, to a ninja level where you must stealthily make your way through stages, taking enemies out unawares, to some that really do push the boat out in terms of their design, such as taking on the role of a patissier and having to decorate the cakes, being graded for each of these, or even filling in the role of a detective and having to look for clues within a particular stage to solve a mystery, gaining those sparkle gems as you go along. I must say I do applaud Nintendo for doing something very different with this game and not making it a bog standard themed 3D platformer, but the caveat to that is that some of the levels I felt, for me at least, landed better than others. In fact, in my opinion, the two levels shown in the demo are two of the weakest in the game. Not everyone will feel this way, of course, but I do find lately Nintendo's demos don't particularly do a good job of selling their products when it comes to showing people what the game's all about. I mentioned Super Mario 64 earlier and the comparison doesn't stop there. As I mentioned, you pick those sparkle gems up and as you clear one of the floors of the theatre, you will then need to defeat a boss, but you must have enough of those sparkle gems in order to fight the boss in the first place. Doing so will unlock the next floor up with new stages to explore and of course new themes, costumes and objectives to fulfil. Princess Peach is basically a new age Mr. Ben in this game, and to be honest there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, Mr. Ben was an absolute legend. Also, once you've completed all of the stages themed around a particular costume, you then have the option to go down into the basement of the theatre, where you can attempt to rescue the actual actor that that costume and role originally belonged to. Doing so will earn you unlockables that you can apply to the characters. You'll also collect coins as you make your way through each stage and you can spend these on new costumes for Peach in one of the shops that you'll find about the theatre. And there are some other bits and bobs that you'll find as you go along, such as rehearsals as they're called, which are basically mini challenges based on the costumes that you found. And also a photo album that you'll be given, which will take a picture of a particular stage once you've found all of the sparkle gems for it. In terms of controls, for the most part things are fine. I do find it weird these days when a game has A as jump and B as your attack. I've got very used to B and Y over the years, despite the fact that was how it was done back in the day. And there are a couple of other oddities, small things, nothing major, but just the way that you need to skip a cutscene, for example, you need to press one button, then press another. Just little oddities that Nintendo don't normally go for. On the whole though, they do do the job and you won't have many issues relating to controls at least with the game. Gameplay is definitely fun and it's an interesting idea. It is perhaps a bit too easy, I must say though, I am not the target audience for this game at all, but I do applaud Nintendo for making a game where each level is so different from the last. Not each of their ideas felt as fleshed out as the others, 
but on the whole it was a refreshing change from the norm and gameplay gets 14 out of 20. Controls, as I said, for the most part are absolutely fine with just a few strange choices here and there, but they also get 14 out of 20. Now in terms of the visuals, as you've seen, Princess Peach Showtime goes for a very similar feel to some of the more recent Mario games, certainly in its cutscenes, with that high level of sheen that almost looks like plasticine to a degree. I feel this does the game justice and it's definitely a looker, and I've already mentioned the originality in terms of the objectives for each stage, but this does extend itself to the themes themselves. Again, without having much prior knowledge of the game, I did stay away from most of what was being said. I was expecting fire worlds, ice worlds, etc, etc, only to find that's not really the case, and whilst stepping away from those stereotypes, you do have some you may well expect to find, Wild West say for example. Having levels based around things like figure skating was quite an interesting idea, and I did love the world in these stages, it's just a shame that because some of the objectives are very specific in what you do, you don't get to explore as much of it as you would otherwise do in a game of this ilk. In terms of performance, the game runs at 30 frames per second, but I did notice some drops at times, certainly whilst fighting the bosses, and at other times here and there, again nothing major, but it's definitely there and it is a shame that Nintendo have seemed to have fallen foul of frame rate in recent releases over the years, something that you wouldn't expect of a company of their size. I also felt the loading times were a little too long at times, nothing horrific, don't get me wrong, but they did take a few seconds longer than I would have liked and they did also stutter a little bit during these loading times. Again, it's not affecting gameplay, but it does just bring that overall level of shine down a tad. In terms of the audio, the game is incredibly charming, that's a word I could use for pretty much every first party Nintendo release, it's something they're very well known for, and it's evident again here. The tunes are those that blend into the gameplay to the point where if you stop and think about it, sometimes you can't actually remember what they sounded like, but as you played along they definitely elevate the experience. Some of them did stick in my head to be fair. And in the same way that I mentioned the level of polish perhaps taking a hit just in terms of little things like stutters during loading screens, the music pushes it right back up there. There's a tiny bit of voice acting in the game, again a bit like Mario in that Peach will say certain lines every so often, but for the most part the inhabitants of this world are relatively silent. Visuals create a charming world that's very good to look at and I love the use of colour and just the stylistic themes of each of the different levels although a few stutters here and there do bring the experience down, they get 15 out of 20. Audio definitely complements what you're seeing on screen in terms of the visuals and the general aesthetic, certainly not one of Nintendo's best, but it has that high level of professionalism that you would expect from them at the same time, and it gets 17 out of 20. Princess Peach Showtime costs £49.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. For this price you are getting a game that will last most people I would say between 7 and 8 hours on an initial run, but there is some post game content here too, I won't go into the full details, I'll leave that as a surprise for each individual, but this could potentially extend the run time for some people, it depends on how much stamina you have to continue playing after seeing the closing credits. It doesn't quite for me hit Nintendo's usual standard of polish, just a few bits here and there that knock it down a tad. And personally, I would say that perhaps this is a game that would have benefited from, say, a tier 2 pricing category, just bringing it down a touch. And on the whole, I would say value gets 12 out of 20. To conclude, Princess Peach Showtime is a game that I didn't look into too much before its release, other than knowing that costumes would play a part to some degree, and I must say that I am impressed with the avenue they've gone down in terms of exactly how that works. They're not just power-ups in the traditional sense, they do actually change the gameplay quite substantially from level to level, and I did really enjoy this aspect. That being said, obviously when you do this you run the risk of not every level playing as well for some people as others, and this was definitely the case for me, but I'm not the target audience for this game, I can fully appreciate that, and I do feel it will find an audience who think it's fantastic. A few other annoyances, such as the frame rate that can stutter at times, and the controls that just feel ever so slightly tedious, something I don't normally say about a first party Nintendo game, do bring the experience down a tad further for me, but on the whole this is still a good game and one I enjoy playing. Princess Peach Showtime gets a switch up score of 72%. 
thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Is this a game you've picked up or will be picking up? Please do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick it up or any other game for that matter, you can get your eShop cards over at our website, switchup.gg. Doing so will earn you 5% back in cash back off your purchase price. And there are other links down there for PlayAsia and Red Art Games. If you want to pick up some physical copies of games, using the links and codes stated down below will earn you discounts from both of those stores. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.